Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to those across the pond and across the world. I am Leo Brown, here once again with what I like to think is a very concise list of things you should never, ever say to your life coach, tarot reader, healer, intuitive counselor, whatever title they choose to call themselves, okay? So before I get started with this list, uh, I want to say thank you. Excuse me. Thank you to all of you who are watching, who are commenting, who are subscribing to the channel. It means a lot to me. It actually keeps me going. So please keep commenting, keep subscribing, keep liking, keep sharing it. It makes it it really does wonders for me because I love the fact that you guys are loving my consistency and I'm loving it too. So the reason I wanted to make this list is because as a reader and a life coach, uh, these are things that I have encountered or other colleagues of mine have encountered themselves. So I wanted to just, you know, use this as kind of a, like a mini breakdown. So that way, you know, for those of you who, who have even gotten readings before or, you know, you've gone to a life coach before or you've gone to an intuitive counselor or, or anybody that does any kind of art outside of what I what we call typical, not typical, but outside of, um, what's the word? We're not typical because that's not the right word. Outside of our normal, quote unquote, normal modalities. Uh, these are things that you just shouldn't say, you know. And I will admit, have I been guilty of it? I have. I've done it myself. Because at one point, uh, I was very much a skeptic before I uh, came into, I should say the business found me. But that's a whole other video for a whole other day. Um, and, you know, before I was given this gift and this skill and before I learned to really embrace it, and I should say, well, I really shouldn't say that because I've always had it, but I think to really embrace it as I have and for it to be what it is now. So that's why I wanted to make this. So, so just in case, you know, you want to get a reading or you've gotten readings, but sometimes you don't know what to say. These are things that you shouldn't say. You know what I mean? To make it, you know, a lot easier for you and the person who is in front of you, who may be reading you, who may be giving you life coaching advice, who may be uh, doing intuitive counseling, anything of that nature, any kind of healing modality. So these are things that you should not say. So let's get started. All right. So we're going to start with number 10. These are 10 things that you should never say to a reader or a life coach, or anybody for that matter, who's in an alternative um, metaphysical new age business. Number 10, you're the reader. You tell me. Okay, this is one that I really, really flip and hate. I do, I hate it. And the reason why I hate it is because it's very condescending. Uh, yes, we readers, we do possess a sixth sense, sometimes a seventh sense, but I have news for you, sweetie. We all do. Everybody does. You have it. I have it. We all have it. It's, and it's like I often say. It's like learning how to sing. We all can carry a tune, but then it's not until we go to a vocal coach or someone that is skilled in voice that teaches us how to sing. It teaches us placement. It teaches us breathing. They teach us color, tone. Uh, they teach us diphthongs and triphthongs, things of that nature. They teach us how to read actual music how to learn lyric, you know, things of that nature. So to say that, you know, I'm the reader and I should tell you, you know, no, that's not how it works. It's a relationship. It's a relationship between two people. If I've never met you a day in my life, I can't sit up here and just pull shit out of my ass. I could, but then that would make me, what? A con artist, and we don't like that. <laughs> so if you ever go to a reader, don't do that. That's rude. That's rude. And that, and that makes us, and also that puts a lot of pressure on us because it makes us think, well, shit, now we got to really, you know, blow them away. And, and to be quite honest with you, that should be a reader's goal. A reader's goal is to help, to heal, to confirm, to affirm, um, my goodness, to just let you know 
telling you what you need to know, not what you want to hear. And my thing is, if you want to be shocked, read the shade room, read the neighborhood talk, read the National Enquirer. Don't come to me or anybody else like me. Number nine, what am I thinking? Believe it or not, you get this a lot. You get this a lot with skeptics. Uh, you'll get people who, well, if you if you are psychic, what am I thinking right now? Uh, so, sir, ma'am, that's a mentalist. I'm not a mind reader. I don't read minds. I don't have telepathy, and I don't want it because I know there's some pretty sick tickets in this town. I, no, ma'am, okay? I'm not a mentalist. And even if even if I did have that gift, and I'm only speaking for myself, I don't know if I want to get inside your head. You know what I mean? And others like me probably would say the same thing. So that's another thing. Don't ask that question because you're equating, you're putting mentalists and psychic in the same category. They're not the same. They're very different. That's like a hamburger and a cheeseburger. Just saying. Number eight, and this kind of goes with um, the first two, you know, well, I mean, shouldn't you know what I need? No, once again, I don't know you. I don't know you. You barely know me. I don't know you. You only thing you know is I'm a reader and you know I read. That's it. I don't know you. I don't meaning I don't know your situation. I don't know what's going on. I don't know the ins and outs. So guess what you're gonna have to do? You're gonna have to open your mouth like a big girl or a big boy and tell me what's going on. That's the only way it's gonna work. Just saying. We ain't doing guess the games right here. That ain't how this works because I don't know about anybody else, but I won't hang up on you. All right? Unless you tell me, hey, you know, I know you don't know me, but I'd like for you to, I just want to see where you pick up. That's different. You ask that. If you say, well, I'll give you my name, but I just want to see where you pick up from me. And if I feel that you're on the right track, and I've had that happen too, then, you know, we'll go with it. Fine. That's fine. Because that's kind of like a, not a try before you buy, but that's just more to make sure that the connection is there. So I understand that, but just, you know, shouldn't you know? No, I don't know. I don't know. Stop being flippant and open your damn mouth. Number seven, and believe it or not, I've had people tell me this to my face. And I'm pretty sure other people have to. And if and you know what? If you want to add some things to this list, put them down below. Please put them down in the comments. I would love to hear from y'all and read them. Number seven, do you believe the stuff that you're telling me? No, darling, I'm doing this for my health. I'm, I'm just doing this, you know. You know, I mean, I don't got nothing better to do. I don't have to get out of bed and, you know, come to this building and wear this outfit that's uncomfortable right now because I've been sitting here for three hours you know when I really could be at home you know get my bag broken in a couple places or, or sleeping or cleaning or whatever or at a cafe somewhere flirting but no I choose to be here with you so to, to ask me do I believe the stuff that I'm, that I'm telling you why would I say it if I didn't believe it if I didn't feel that it was true or concise or it made sense to your situation, why would I even say it? I, my, I myself have a motto. If I don't see it, sense it, feel it, or hear it, I won't say it. Because guess what? Then I'd be lying to you. And no one likes liars. <sighs> Number six. Is this a job to you? No, man. It no. I, you know, I. I mean, I just. You know, I just stumbled on this one day and thought the cars were pretty, and I just really wanted to do this for a living, just to deal with people's bullshit every day, all day. And you know, I mean, this is just what I love to do. And you know, people not wanting to pay me, and they want to get it for free. And you know, of course, it's a job. It is a career. Yes, for for a lot of us, this is either a Excuse me, this is either a part-time job or it is a full-time career. But rest assured, it is a full-time, excuse me, for many of us, it is a full-time calling. I myself, I can only speak for me, 
I can tell you this much. I did not ask to do this. I, just to give you a little tidbit, I wanted to be an entertainer. I wanted to be in the music business. Uh, I still do, low-key. I wanted to sing. I wanted to, to dance. You couldn't tell me I wasn't going to be the next Paula Abdul Jenna Jackson combo, okay? I, I wanted to do those things. So when people ask, is this really a job? Yes, it is. This is really for me, and I can't speak for, for other readers, but for me, it really is a calling. It really is something that I love to do because I love helping people. And, and whether they know it or not, I see a lot of myself in the people that I end up helping. Maybe not all the time, but majority of the time I do. I see a lot of me in there. So yes, this is this is definitely a job for me. And if you, and if you don't believe me, you can look at my tax returns and see that. Number five, why are you charging me? Shouldn't this be free? <laughs> okay. And I hate to sound flippy when I say this, when I answer this question. There are a lot of people who, a lot of a lot of people in my industry who do this for free, many. Uh, but there are also many who don't. And part of the reason is because everything is an energy exchange, including money. Uh, and bills are not free, okay? So, and it's not just about the money. But if I, and I'm, and like I said, a lot of us, if we could, myself included, if, if, if the energy exchange regarding money and finances weren't an issue for, for many, we would do it for free because that's how much we love doing it. And not how much, And sometimes, depending on the person and the severity of the situation, we will do it for free. But I'm charging you because it's an energy exchange. If you're if you're coming to me with your issues and you're loading them onto me and you're wanting me to to give you insight and clarity and confirmation then so in exchange for that I'd like some money because everything is in an exchange whether you know it or not you're exchanging energy with me when you come to me not with not just with me but with any reader you're exchanging energy with them when you talk to them about your problems and you're getting emotional and weeping and stuff we take that we take that with us uh, many of us take that home with us it's not an easy thing. It's not a hard road to hoe. So when people ask, why are you charging? Shouldn't this be free? It is because we need something to counteract the energy that we just got from you. So that's where the money comes in. And like I said before, bills are free. Um, <laughs> number four, how accurate is this? Well, darling, that's entirely up to you. The more open you are and the more honest you are with yourself, even before you make the phone call, the Skype call, the WhatsApp call, the messenger call, uh, the email reading, whatever you choose to do, if you're not being honest with yourself, it will be off base. But then, but then that's why I come in too. I have to be open and honest with myself too and say, okay, can I read for this person? Are they, are they, um, you know, how do I put it? Not are they good for me, but energetically, do we mesh? You know, can I really help them? Can I give them advice that would really uh, help them see things in a, different, in a different perspective? Or am I just going to reel them in? You know what I mean? So it really depends. It's, it's based, it goes back to what I was saying before. It really is based on the energy exchange. So the more open you are, and that comes from both reader and client. The more open you are, the more accurate it may be. All right. Number three, how much money do you make? Believe it or not, people do ask that question. Um, first of all, darling, that's none of your business. But there are some people who are in this who do extremely well. There are some people who do moderately well. There are some people who don't fare well at all. But either way, it's like that's no one's business, but theirs. Okay, number two. I don't believe in this stuff. It's just for fun. Okay, here's the thing. Going to readers, going to healers, going to intuitive counselors, life coaches, it's not a belief system. So let's start there. 
we're not asking you to believe anything. There are many life coaches and counselors and healers who um, come from different varying faiths and backgrounds. And they're not asking you to believe in anything. Uh, and obviously that particular statement may be false because if you didn't really believe in what people were telling you or, or uh, advising for you, why do you keep coming back? And there's nothing wrong with the fun aspect of it all, but don't treat it like a novelty. Treat it, give some respect to it. You don't have to believe in it. It's not a belief system, but respect it because we respect you enough to tell you what spirit, the universe, the gods, the ancestors, goddess, excuse me, what, excuse me, my goodness, y'all, whatever name, um, we give the divine has to say, we respect you enough to tell you what you need to know. So respect our profession in the sense of saying, you know what? I may not necessarily believe in it in form of a, in form of faith, but I do respect it in, in, you know, for what it does for me. And you can also, you can be respectful and still get the fun out of it. You can still have fun with it. There's nothing wrong with it because the one thing I would often say to a lot of us, myself included, is to not take yourself. Take what you do seriously, but not yourself. And the final thing that you should never, ever, ever say to a reader. Number one, get a real job. This is nothing but a hustle. Believe it or not, I have heard that since the day I decided to make this into a business. Uh, and I'm pretty sure many have heard this. First of all, it's not a hustle. Let's start there. This is actually a job. This goes back to uh, the question when people ask, how much money do you make? It's a job. It, you know, we pay in the taxes like everyone else. Uh, and, and it's not a, how do I put it? It may not be what you would consider a job, but it is. It's a job. It's entertainment. It's counseling. It's... Um, What's the word? It's holistic healing. It's all those things rolled into one. Uh, it's, it, it's, it's advisement. It's advice, you know? It's all these things rolled into one. So yes, it is a job because you can be a lawyer and be a holistic healer. You can be a psychologist and be a spiritual advisor. You can, and, and actually, if you get those things and put them together, they can help you. You can be a social worker and be a holistic healer and be a counselor and be a psychic. So yes, it is a job. It is a job. You may not think so because in your mind, you when you think of a job, and, and this is true for a lot of people, when you think of jobs or careers, they think of doctors, lawyers. They think of, uh, let me think of something. They think of blue collar people, you know, servers. They think, uh, or I shouldn't say blue collar, working class, excuse me, you know, people like that. So when they see a job like mine, they don't view it as a job. They view it as like, oh, this ain't a job. You're just trying to hustle people out of their money. No, if I wanted to hustle you out of your money, this would be a magic job and no shade to magicians. But if I wanted to hustle you out of your money, I'd be doing card tricks and I don't do that. <laughs> I don't know how to do that, you know? And I, I'm pretty sure a lot of us would do what a lot of scammers do. And that's and really and truly, that's where that comes from, too. Because a lot of people have been around scammers. So they think, well, every reader I come in contact with or every person that does this, they're a scammer. You know, they're in it for the money. And it's like, eh, no. Because it's like half and half. On one hand, you have those that are like that. But majority of the people who are in this calling slash business really do want to help people. They really do want to foster a sense of growth, a sense of empowerment, and most of all, a sense of community with their clientele and with the people that they help. So yes, to you, it may not be a real job, but to us, it is real as apple pie. So it's as real as apple pie. So that's all I want to say. Those are 10 things you should never, ever say to a reader, to a healer, to any kind of intuitive uh, counselor, anybody that you're going to for help. 
So I hope that made sense. I hope that you've enjoyed what I've had to say. And I thank you, my sugar bass, for liking, for commenting, for subscribing, and most of all, for supporting my channel. It really does mean a lot. I know my channel is not for everybody. It's not a typical channel. Um, and I have to admit, I can be very inconsistent, but I'm really working on that. I'm trying to be better because I really want this channel to grow and be more and be more. So until next time, I love the sugar bears. Have a wonderful, wonderful Tuesday evening. And I will talk with all of you soon. Have a good one. Bye-bye.